and welcome to Andrew Wilbar Fantasy Football and NFL Draft, the channel dedicated to fantasy football and the NFL Draft. What else? Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any fantasy football questions or comments, put them in the comment section. I will answer them for you in the comment section. So get those questions in there if you need help in your fantasy lineups. It's going to be an interesting last couple weeks. This has been a up and down year in fantasy football. A lot of unexpected things have happened, uh, but the playoffs are here. Weeks 14 and 15 in some leagues, maybe even week 13 if you have an early fantasy playoffs. Um, we're going to get into all of it today. I'm going to give you some of the guys that you, if you have these guys on your roster, you need to start them in weeks 15 and 16. I'm going to look at some easy schedules, a couple that may be a little bit more challenging. We're going to get into all of it. But first, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell icon so that you get notifications whenever a new fantasy football or NFL draft video is out. Speaking of the NFL draft, I have a college game day article that you can go and check out at BehindTheSteelCurtain.com from last Saturday. Another one will be up this Saturday. You can uh, click on the link in the description and go there if you are into the NFL draft coming up in the next few weeks. We're going to start making that transition as fantasy football ends. We're going to start moving to the NFL draft, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a very interesting class to say the least, but let's focus on the task at hand, and that is fantasy football playoffs. I'm still in it in, I believe, five of my six leagues that I'm in. I still have a chance at making the playoffs. Several I'm pretty much a lock to get in at this point. Uh, but I'm going to give you guys some advice. We're going to start off with a quarterback uh, that I believe is as one of the best uh, remaining schedules the rest of the way out, and that is Ryan Tannehill. And this is a guy that is available in a lot of leagues. In the leagues that I'm in, he's generally available. I actually just picked him up in one of my leagues today. Um, I'm going to be starting him this week against Cleveland. But if you look at the rest of his schedule, Jacksonville, Detroit, and Green Bay. So there's really no week that you really need to consider benching this guy, especially if you're thin at quarterback or you have some inconsistencies. Maybe you were relying on Cam Newton for a while. And now that's not working out as well. Or Matt Ryan being a little bit up and down. Or Ben Roethlisberger. If you're in, you have quarterbacks in that range and you're not comfortable with starting them week in, week out, Ryan Tannehill, he had a little bit of a slump in the middle of the year in terms of fantasy football anyways. The last two games, he scored over 20 points in each of them, uh, and I would expect that trend to continue. Cleveland is horrible against the past. Jacksonville, uh, they're a little bit banged up in the secondary right now, and of course the Lions have been absolutely horrendous. Jeff Okuda hasn't been as good as what the Lions fans were hoping for uh, as their third overall pick, and of course the Packers, they're a little bit stronger against the pass than they are against the run, but still not a terribly scary defense if you must start him if you get all the way to the fantasy championship game. So Ryan Tannehill is a quarterback that I think you need to consider picking up if he's available. If you have him on your team, you need to pick him up. If you are in a league where the trade deadline is not passed or you don't have a trade deadline at all, maybe consider going after this guy because he's not going to cost you a whole lot, especially if you have depth in another position that you can afford to get a little bit thinner at. Ryan Tannehill is a guy that you want to consider picking up or trading for. At running back, there are a couple guys I want to focus on here. Now, these guys aren't necessarily sleepers, Okay. The first one is Antonio Gibson, okay? He has been an absolute monster the past few weeks. He's one of the best running backs in fantasy football this year. Um, but let's look at weeks 15 and 16. It is against Seattle and it is against Carolina. I don't know if any of you would even consider benching him to start off with, but don't. If you have someone in your league that is playing with that chance, you know, maybe there's a someone who is desperately, desperately looking for you know, a quarterback, and you have two of them. Maybe you have Justin Herbert and Kyler Murray, and you feel comfortable with just one of those guys, and you can move him and get a guy like Antonio Gibson for him. I would make that move because he is going to come in huge in weeks 15 and 16, especially week 16 against Carolina. Week 15, they're going to be behind them. They have to throw the ball a little bit more, which we'll get into Terry McLaurin in a minute. That's why he's also a guy that you want to be starting if you have him the last couple weeks of the year. Uh, but to start off with Antonio Gibson, he has been excellent this year. The Washington's offensive line is not that great, um, but he is very dangerous in open space. With Alex Smith as the quarterback, they're a little bit more of a threat to uh, pass the ball. Um, and we're just seeing this Washington football team really come together under Ron Rivera. They're starting to play a little bit better, a lot, making a lot less mistakes, not turning the ball over as much. Um, and that's benefiting Antonio Gibson. It's giving him more quality touches. Another running back to keep an eye on is Austin Eckler. And pretty much everyone has forgotten about Eckler and fancy. I mean, he's been injured all year. But week 15, he plays the Raiders, which is an awesome matchup if you, especially if the, he's one of those guys that you want to have on your team. If you're 
kind of on the brink of the playoffs. You're that four or five seed. You're trying to get in. You happen to get in, and then you have to play that number one team uh, in the playoffs in week 15. Eckler is a guy you want to have on your team that week going against the Raiders. I expect him to have a 20-point game that week. Um, he has had some very good success against uh, the Vegas Raiders. And really, if you look at their backfield, nobody has really stepped up to the challenge for the last four or five weeks. Uh, Kalen Balaj had one good week. Now he's banged up and injured. Josh Kelly, he started off the year really hot when Eckler and Justin Jackson were both healthy, but then he kind of tapered off. So this is a really good time for Austin Eckler to get going. He's coming back healthy. This is a big boost to this Chargers offense, and I expect him to be a winner for you in the fantasy playoffs. Kareem Hunt is another guy, and a lot of these you will notice that we're bunching teams together that have easy schedules, because you'll see this with the Browns, we're seeing it with Washington, a couple other teams as well. Uh, But Kareem Hunt, week 15 against the Giants, week 16 against the Jets, we could just leave it right there, okay? We know Nick Chubb's going to be awesome. He's going to get 20 carries a game, but Cleveland is best when they are running the ball effectively and when both of their running backs are involved. Jarvis Landry, he had a really good, he had a breakout game this week, and we'll get into him in a minute as well. A uh, guy that I think you can pick up because he's he's available in a lot of leagues. He is another guy that I picked up today um, off the waiver wire. Uh, but on to Kareem Hunt. I mean, they don't have a whole lot of options in the passing game right now. Donovan Peoples Jones, Rashard Higgins, uh, Austin Hooper hasn't been what they were hoping he would be. Uh, has been off and on injured. Uh, David Njoku, they don't have a legit piece outside of Jarvis Landry that they can trust. Kareem Hunt is getting a lot of receiving work out of the backfield. So if you're in PPR leagues, definitely want to start him up as an RB2. And even if you don't have him, that definitely a flex option at worst. A guy that really there is no reason you should be benching in weeks 15 and 16 if you make it that far. Um, Plus, really, this week going against Tennessee, he really the rest of the way out. You should start him in your fantasy lineup. Browns don't have another absolutely horrible uh, matchup the rest of the way. Moving on to the wide receiver position, Jarvis Landry will stick with the Browns right here. Um, and the reason being, I mean, of course, he had his breakout year week a week ago. I was kind of telling you guys a couple weeks ago, you should probably consider just dropping this guy because he's not going to do a whole lot. Um, but he does have the Giants weeks 15 and the Jets week 16. Uh, two of the best matchups you can possibly get. And I'm really going to leave it at that because we've talked about Landry a lot on this channel this year. Um, I'm not a huge Jarvis Landry fan, especially in Cleveland's offense, but with Odell out, he is the number one option. Baker's looking his way, and they're starting to get a little bit of a chemistry together. I like what they're doing. I think the Browns, uh, honestly, a lot of people are down talking them. You know, they're not that good of a team. They're just, you know, they played an easy schedule, um, and when they played good teams, they've lost. And that is true. But. They are getting better by the week, and I believe that defense is coming around enough to where they could be a legit team in the postseason, maybe advance around. Uh, but for Jarvis Landry, a guy that I believe just because of the volume, I think he's a guy that you have to start in the flex leagues, especially if you're in PPR leagues. You have to start Jarvis Landry. Uh, another running back, I'm, I'm, we're getting stick with the receivers for a minute, but one running back I forgot to mention as a sleeper is Devontae Booker. Uh, going against the Chargers, Josh Jacobs had an ankle sprain in this past game. He is There's a good chance he's going to be out this week. I don't know how long this is going to last, but he may be someone he want to stream off the waiver wire and keep on your bench for now. Because uh, Devontae Booker, he has been actually really productive. He did nothing with Denver, but John Gruden has gotten a lot out of him. He's been a really good fit running behind that powerful offensive line. Uh, so I believe that whether Jacobs plays or not, you have to look, um, you know, at week 15 against the Chargers, that Thursday night football game. We already mentioned um, Eckler in that game. Devontae Booker may be a decent flex starter if you were really thin at the running back position you need someone because it's going to take Jacobs a couple weeks to get back to that bell cow role that he we we're accustomed to seeing from him getting 25 carries a game. So Devontae Booker is going to have a decent role in the offense, and he has been contributing even when Jacobs has been healthy. So I believe Devontae Booker is a guy you should stash on your bench for now, but a guy that could come in big playoff time, especially if this Josh Jacobs ankle injury lingers. Now that I got that out of the way, we'll move back to the wide receivers. Um, and uh, I've thought about putting Allen Robinson on this list, but then if you look week 16 against Green Bay, they've been tough against wide receivers. Plus, there is uncertainty with Mitchell Trubisky at quarterback. I realize that. In my opinion, he's playing better than what Nick Foles was. That's not popular. Probably if you're, if you're a Bears fan out there and you want to tell me something different in the comment section, go ahead. I like Mitch Trubisky. I don't think he's a terrible quarterback. He's not excellent by any means, but I believe a fresh start from elsewhere may be good. just was not good for him to be the number two overall pick. And having that pressure of Watson and Mahomes being behind him, 
Uh, it was really rough on him. The Bears fans were rough on him r- the minute that he was drafted. I believe a fresh start somewhere else will be good for him and for Na- Matt Nagy, the head coach as well. I mean, it, you're looking at him. He's probably going to be getting fired. That's what, at least, that's what I'm hearing uh, from Bears fans. Uh, if he does get fired, I, I think that's a bad move by the Bears. Uh, but he's going to find a head coaching job somewhere else, and he's going to be a very good head coach somewhere. I liked what he did in Kansas City when he was able to call the plays, when Alex Smith was the quarterback. I don't know where he's going to go. It, I would love it, personally, as a Steelers fan. I would love to see. I know Ben Roethlisberger's not going to want to learn a West Coast-style Kansas City offense, but that would be pretty cool to see with all the weapons the Steelers have, Deontay Johnson, Juju, Claypool. I mean, this would be a really interesting offense with Matt Nagy calling the plays, and Steelers' offensive play calling has been horrendous this year. Really what could keep us from being a Super Bowl team, in my opinion. Um, but just another guy to keep an eye on, Allen Robinson. Uh, but Juju Smith-Schuster I do want to get into because if you look at his matchups, okay, Week 15 against Cincy, Good matchup. Week 16 against Indianapolis is a little bit more challenging. But you have to pick and choose with the Steelers wide receivers because there's someone different every week that's producing. So who are you going to go with? You're going to go with Claypool, who will go off for 21 week, and then the next week he'll get you three. Deontay Johnson, we saw him have, like, what, 20 drops the other night? I mean, every Steelers receiver was dropping the ball against the Ravens. But Deontay Johnson has struggled with drops at times this year. He gets a lot of volume, but he's not getting big catches down the field. A lot of games, it really depends on whether he gets a touchdown for you or not and whether he's going to be a really good fantasy option. But the one consistent thing about all of this is that we know when it comes down to the crucial moments, Ben Roethlisberger is going to try to find Juju Smith-Schuster. He is the best in contested catch situations. I mean, James Washington is good in that role as well. Um, But just one-on-ones, winning the one-on-one battles across the middle of the field, making the tough catches, moving the chains, and those are the receivers that Ben Roethlisberger likes and he trusts when the game is on the line. We're starting to see him get it in a couple touchdowns these past couple weeks. Expect that to continue. Now, once we get to week 16, we'll figure it out then whether you want to start Juju or not. But until then, I would start him because I believe he's going to be the most consistent Steelers wide receiver. We're going to move on to the tight ends. Before we get out of here, there are two that I want to get into, and one is Zach Ertz. And I know he's been injured, but he's only 58% owned in NFL.com leagues. So I would be checking that waiver wire, making sure he's available, especially if you're thin at tight end. I know that you know he may not be excellent, the Zach Ertz of three years ago, but I mean you, you, you can't pick and choose with the tight ends this year, okay? That's just what it is, okay? The, the tight end position is still horrible. I was wrong about it at the start of the year. I was right about my sleepers with Johnny Smith and TJ Hawkinson. Both of them have had nice years. Uh, but from the position as a whole... Uh, there just isn't a whole lot of depth. You're really just searching for anything you can get. And even with Dallas Goddard there, who just had a nice game on Monday night against Seattle, even with the inconsistent quarterback play, which that's partially the offensive line. If you pay attention to it, the Eagles' offensive line is horrible. It's not all Carson Wentz's fault. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, So you guys get your money's worth today. Um, But Zach Ertz is a guy that I still think you can pick up. He's at least as your tight end, too, if you have space for two tight ends on your roster. But unless you have TJ Hawkinson or Travis Kelsey or you're hoping that George Kittle comes back or you have Mark Andrews, outside of those guys, really, I would risk picking up Zach Ertz, John o. Smith you may want to hold on to. But outside of maybe those five guys, Darren Waller, Zach Ertz is a guy that you should probably pick up just for the sake of not, having, not allowing someone else to pick him up because his schedule is pretty easy the rest of the way. I think he's questionable as of right now as whether he's going to play this week. Um, but weeks thir- weeks uh, 14, 15, and 16 has some favorable matchups. Um, so he's a guy that I would consider picking up if he's available. Um, again, he's 58% owned, so there's a good chance he isn't, um, especially if you're in a 12-team or larger league. Um, but I would be at least checking that waiver wire. You may be able to find yourself a gem for the last couple weeks of the year. And then the last one is Will Disley. And I, people are knocking his fantasy projection saying, you know, oh, he's only a blocker. Last year before he was injured, he was the number two fantasy tight end. Okay, this guy is a good, he's a very good um, tight end still. He just is very injury prone. Uh, Greg Olson is out uh, for the rest of the season. Jacob Hollister, he is getting some snaps and he got more targets from Russell Wilson. I believe he had two catches for 11 yards, whereas Will Disley didn't receive any targets. However, I expect that to change because Disley is so, the better blocker of the two. He's going to be on the field more often. He's going to be on the field more in red zone situations. And really, all you're hoping for right now from 
fantasy tight ends right now is just a touchdown. And I think that's possible. Teams are starting to double DK Metcalf. Tyler Lockett isn't an excellent red zone receiver. He's not a big bodied receiver. So Will Disley is a guy that there's that chance he could get you one or two touchdowns in one game. And against Washington and the Rams, I, they're good against receivers. Both of them are, excuse me. But both of them are very, very mediocre middle of the pack against tight ends. And I, I mean, this is really unless you are in dire need of a tight end. But if you're looking at all the other guys on the waiver wire, Jordan Aikens, even Eric Ebron, I, I'm, I don't trust Eric Ebron that much. I would, I would put Will Disley in that same category as them. I think he has to be one of the first guys that you can start picking up off the waiver wire. If Robert Tanyan is available, I would probably pick up Tanyan uh, before Will Disley. But once we get to weeks 15 and 16 and you need a tight end, just keep the name Will Disley in the back of your mind. Who knows, he could be the sleeper that wins it all for you this year. That is going to do it all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, share this video on social media, and subscribe to the channel. Again, check out the link in the description if you want to check out that NFL Draft article focusing on Alabama's and Auburn's 2021 NFL Draft prospects. We'll have NFL Draft videos coming up in the next couple weeks. But until then, it's the focus is still on fantasy football and winning you guys your fantasy football leagues. That's going to do it all for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.